So we're going to now use the factor theorem for another process. So far with the factor theorem, what we've actually done is factorize expressions. This time, we're going to use it to find unknown coefficients. So here it says, given that 2x plus 1 is a factor of 6x cubed plus, there's my unknown, a x squared plus 1, determine the value of a. So because 2x plus 1 is a factor, what do I know using function notation? f of what? f of minus 0 0.5. If you think about this thing that we've got here, if we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, x would be minus 0 0.5 or minus a half. So we know that f of minus a half is equal to 0. Okay? Not f of minus 1, but f of minus a half because of that coefficient that we've got there for 2, for the 2x. Okay? So I can say this is... This is the factor theorem. If you ever use the factor theorem, why not just spend two seconds writing the three words, the factor theorem in brackets, OK? Because it's just telling everyone you know what you're doing there. In other words, you don't need to write this bit down. This is saying when we substitute x equals a half into 6x cubed plus ax squared plus 1, the answer is 0. That's really what it's saying here. And I suppose I should have said at the top, let f of x equal 6x cubed plus ax squared plus 1. If I didn't tell them what ax squared was equal to, sorry, if I didn't tell you them what that, that f of x was equal to, I can't really use that f notation during the question unless I've introduced what the f notation is actually representing. No, because we need to find out what a is. That's the instruction, so it just says if we sub x equals minus a half in, the answer is 0. So I'm going to do 6 multiplied by minus a half cubed plus a times minus a half squared plus 1 is equal to 0, because this is what f of minus a half is. f of minus a half is that bit of the expression. And what's minus a half cubed? minus an eighth, and minus an eighth times six is minus six eighths, which is how many, what can I simplify minus six eighths to? Three minus three quarters. So I like to avoid it. I like avoiding calculators when I can, okay? So this first bit is minus three quarters. What's minus a half squared? A quarter. Oh, a quarter. It's a negative times a negative, a half times a half. So you get plus a quarter a plus 1 equals 0. I'm just going to move this up here so that we've got some space to write this all in. So simplifying these terms we've got here, we've got 1 minus 3 quarters. So that's a quarter a plus a quarter equals 0. A quarter a equals minus a quarter. And so a is equal to minus 1. So it's kind of similar to the stuff we were doing before, apart from the unknown thing is now within the function rather than to do with the factor or, the fun uh, or what it was equal to or anything like that. Okay. So I'm going to do this one slightly quicker. I'm going to start off by saying let f of x equal 3x cubed plus 11x squared plus ax plus 1. As 3x minus 1 is a factor, f of what is going to be equal to 0? f of a third equals a 0. And I'm going to write in brackets by the factor theorem. And I'm just going to substitute everything in and see what happens. So when I substitute in a third, I'm going to have 3 times a third cubed plus 11 times a third squared plus a multiplied by a third 
plus 1 equals 0. And I think we could do most of this without a calculator. What's um, 3 times a third cubed? That's 1 27th is a third cubed. So times that by 3? 1 ninth. OK? I personally don't even do the full cubing here. I actually just, I know that the 3 is going to cancel out with one of them, so it's just the third squared. So it's just a ninth. That's just a ninth. 11 times a third squared is, what's a third squared? A ninth times that by 11? 11 ninths. So you have plus 11 ninths. Then here we've got a third A plus 1 equals 0. So we've now got 12 ninths plus 1, which is 21 ninths. So a third A equals minus 21 over 9. Yeah, because you've got a ninth plus 11 ninths is 12 ninths plus 9 ninths. Again, you can just use a calculator. You can just use a calculator if you want to. So if I just finish this bit off here, multiply both sides by 3, and you get minus 21 over 3. Again, use a calculator to solve this if you're getting yourself tangled up. I just know some of you are wanting to aim for like the top, top grades. And aiming for the top grades means being really quick with mental maths, because it saves you making a mistake on a calculator. The amount of times I use a calculator and I make a mistake, I usually trust my brain, usually trust my brain over a calculator, if I can do it. What were you going to say, Andrew? Would you simplify it? How do you? Oh, yeah, of course. Goodness me. Just as I was saying, I trust my brain over a calculator. I knew that was going to happen. Minus 21 over 3 is obviously minus 7. I was just checking to see Andrew was paying attention, and good job he was. Uh, probably no, you would need to get minus seven. So maybe that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you should use a calculator for all this. I trust computer over myself. Yes, okay, good. Maybe I should trust a computer over myself as well. So pretty straightforward, right? You just use the factor theorem in the other way around. We're now going to try um, a slightly different one. Everyone got that one that one written? Yeah. Okay, so this time. What is different? Tell me the thing that is different about this question, and let's see if we can predict what's going to happen. Prova. So it gives us two factors. Yes. And it gives us A and B to work out. OK, so you're right. We've got two unknowns, two factors. What do you think is going to be one element of this question? What do you think might happen during this question? We're going to have a simultaneous Good. We're going to have a simultaneous equation, because we've got two things we don't know about. So we're predicting there's going to be simultaneous equations. So again, I'm going to start off by saying, and we need to waste this time, but it's the posh way of doing things. So we're going to let f of x equal this expression that we've got here. And we can say, by the factor theorem, we know that f of what is equal to 0? f of minus 1 and f of 2 is equal to 0. I'm just going to do both of those, and then we'll do some simultaneous equations. So that's going to be a multiplied by minus 1 cubed plus b multiplied by minus 1 squared minus 9 multiplied by minus 1 minus 10 equals 0. And we'll just go through and simplify everything that we've got here. Amina, what is minus 1 cubed? Minus. minus. It's just going to be minus a. What's minus 1 squared, Amina? So it's just going to be plus b. Minus 9 times minus 1? 9. And you've got 9 minus 10, which is minus 1. OK? So that's our first one that we've got there. I might write it as minus a plus b equals 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I now know that f of 2 is equal to 0. In other words, a multiplied by 2 cubed plus b multiplied by 2 squared minus 9 multiplied by 2 minus 10 is equal to 0. Two cubed is 8. That's 8a. Two squared is 4. 
9 times 2 is minus 8. This minus 9 times 2 is minus 18, minus 10. That's minus 28. In other words, 8a plus 4b is equal to 28. And then we'll do simultaneous equations with these. Now, you've got features. You will have a feature on your calculators, but many of you don't have the calculators yet. There is a feature on the calculator that you will use that will just allow you to solve these straight away. So I'm just going to show you it on my one. You will go to this. You'll have something similar like this on your calculator. You'll go to the polynomial, not polynomial, simultaneous. There are two unknowns. And I think our value of in the first one was minus a plus b was equal to 1. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. And on the second one, it is 8a plus 4b equals 28. So it's 8a plus 4b is equal to 28. You're allowed to do this in the exam. You then just press solve, and it immediately tells you. It says x and y, but we know that the x and y is corresponding to a and b. That means a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. And you can just go straight away and just say a equals 2, b equals 3. Done. If, they show me what's going on. if they said show using algebra, then you should show the process. But I've read something in the examiner's reports recently, and they've said if a student can do it on a calculator and it doesn't say using algebra, we should expect them to do it on a calculator. So if you ever come across linear simultaneous equations and it doesn't say using algebra, you should get into the habit of putting them on your calculator and having them solved really quickly, which is why we need to make sure you've all got those calculators so you can start practicing so using it. I need to talk and find out with Ms. Chalmers, OK? So that's why I haven't spent a lot of the page here finding out what a and, um, the a and b are. I've just gone straight in with the simultaneous equation solver, and I know that I've got those right. I probably would check to see that they made sense in case I typed something in wrong. You can see that minus 2 plus 3 is 1, so that one works. And also, 8 times 2 is 16, plus 4 times 3, which is 12. 16 plus 12 is 28, so we found the values of a and b. So Provat predicted it was going to be simultaneous equations, and it was simultaneous equations. Then what we're going to do after this is we will have a look at doing some exam questions. Okay, So I think what we'll do now is we're going to try some questions from exercise 7C. We're going to go from question 7 onwards here, which is going to have some of that practice. And then perhaps for the last part of the lesson, we'll come back and do some of those exam questions in some timed conditions. Okay.